meet Rio. Oh, wait, Has anyone ever seen an animal that looks like Rio before? She looks a little bit different. She is called a Southern Tamandua. These are South American lesser ant eaters. So look at the features on her face that kind of clue you into an anteater. Now, we're gonna talk an awful lot about training right now. I'm actually supposed to be talking about locomotion, so we'll maybe do a little bit here. But this is Rio's very first time ever climbing down this branch. I think maybe we should talk about training first since they're seeing a training session firsthand. Huh? I love it so much. So, here we are, Rio. She is one of our veteran animals in our Animal Ambassador Program. She is 18 years old. She's been here at Denver Zoo since she was just about six months old. And so, she's one of our best trained animals just because she's very calm and she's also super smart. And so that combination leads her to being able to do all kinds of stuff to show off. But maybe can you see she's doing something a little bit different than what the zookeepers were envisioning? <laughs> That's okay, we're not gonna panic about that. It's kind of our job to, first of all, observe what, the, what our animal is doing. And then we'll kind of readjust based on what kind of nonverbal communication she's showing us. So the first time there she showed us, I really just kind of want to climb the other way. All right, that's fine. Maybe she's just not going to get some of her favorite, favorite treats if she makes that choice. She 100% can make that choice. She's just not going to get juicy, delicious bugs if she goes the other way. Who had bugs for lunch today? Big wiggly, delicious mealworms. Okay, very good, quite a few. I like it, it's very, they're very high in protein. Really good for your GI tract. Um, that is what Rio's favorite treat is. She gets mealworms. These animals in the wild can eat about 9,000 bugs a day. That's a lot, right? So here at the zoo, we know that, and so we can use that to our benefit and say, you know what, since she loves that so, so much, we're just going to give that to her for when she decides to make the right choices during her training. I can see Becca and I can see Kelsey doing a lot of communicating back and forth with her to figure out what to do. I think, I'm not positive, but I think they're going to bring Rio down here and we're going to reset. So, with that being said, we're going to send it over to our stage B area over here. We have Stephanie, we have Shannon. Hi yeah, guys! Tell us about another cool animal. Yeah, so speaking of training, um, it was Rio's choice. She didn't feel like going down the log today, but choice is a great way to talk about, um, or a great topic to talk about with our snakes as well. Um, unlike Rio, Rio likes to eat bugs, so that's an easy way to reinforce her or a way to pay her for doing any sort of uh, behaviors we're asking her to do. It's harder to reinforce our snakes because they only eat every so often. Um, the larger the snake, the more time they can go between feedings. A large snake like Flavio here can actually go a month without eating, so uh, we don't really have snake tasty bit treats that we can give him. He is an Argentine boa, and he is a constrictor, so he would be eating things like small rodents, uh, things like that. But uh, again, he gets fed about every two weeks here, so he does get fed. Um, but he actually prefers to be outside. So that is the other way we can reinforce an animal. Is uh, Does anybody have any dogs or cats at home? Yeah? Uh, some of those dogs go crazy for balls or even attention. Um, so you don't have to train them with food. You can train them by giving them their favorite toy or giving them lots of love and attention after um, doing a behavior you've asked them to do. So for our snakes, he really likes to come outside and exercise. So this is his exercise tree. We can even wheel this up to his enclosure and he can choose to come out and exercise and he'll actually put himself away when he's done exercising. So a great way for us to get Flavio out to do some training is to bring that tree along and he knows he's safe, he's gonna be comfortable, he's gonna relax in the sun. Speaking of feeling safe and comfortable, 
Uh, Laura, do we have any other animals to meet down here today? We sure do, Shannon. I'm gonna send it this direction to Shelly. It's not Shelly we're meeting today. So sorry, everybody. We're gonna meet Wookie. So Anton is gonna bring out this very handsome furry little guy. His name is Wookie. He is a Linus two-toed sloth. And in his training, he is being worked with a tactile. Does anybody know what tactile means? It means touching. So he doesn't really like to be touched very well, but in order to keep care, have good care for our, our uh, Linnea's two-toed sloth, we need to be able to get the vets to be able to give them shots and touch his body to make sure he's nice and healthy. So that's one of the things we're working with training Wookie on. He is a three-year-old sloth. He was born here at the Denver Zoo. His parents actually live up in Tropical Discovery, Elliot and Charlotte, if anybody's been up there to take a look at them. But as you can see, he moves around pretty slowly and he is moving for his favorite treat. So he is very motivated, just like Shannon was saying, snakes are motivated by different things. He is motivated by his different food items. He loves to eat lettuce. He also gets like a granola bar, but his absolute favorite is sweet potatoes. He will do almost anything for sweet potatoes. He also gets some apples and pears mixed in there. And he will do just about anything Anton is asking him to do. I heard he's not a fan of vegetables. He actually really hates celery. If celery even touched his favorite food item, sweet potatoes, he wouldn't eat his sweet potatoes. So we give him all sorts of different treats to be able to train him. His mom, Charlotte, was actually trained to get ultrasounds when she was pregnant with him. So that, uh, Anton actually got to watch him long before he was born on his ultrasounds. What about Rio? Yeah, I was just gonna say super cool. We actually have trained Rio to do ultrasounds as well. So we talked about those bugs that we use. There's a very fancy training term. It is called positive reinforcement. What that means is when, anytime we ask an animal to do something training related, we give them their favorite treats. It's a super easy concept. You can use it with your dogs and cats or even your fish at home. So that's exactly what these ladies here on stage A are doing, is they are using her favorite treats, those bugs, to get her to check out this brand new log, just like we were talking about. They're using that positive reinforcement. Now, we also use positive reinforcement training to teach Rio how to stand up on her back legs and show her belly. Now, she has had one girl and one boy here at Denver Zoo, and when she was pregnant both times, we used that training to get her to have some ultrasound, a very calm behavior, a very voluntary behavior that she participated in, so that every step of the way of her pregnancy, we knew that her babies were nice and healthy. So I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit and we're gonna talk about that locomotion that we're gonna start the demo with. We're just going, we're rolling with it today. So you can see that our mama, she's actually Grandma Rio here, she uses a couple of different things to move around. First of all, she has very long claws on all four of her feet. She uses those to kind of dig into the bark on the tree to move up and down. Now, if we get a good glimpse at that beautiful tail of hers, she has a mostly prehensile tail. Um, prehensile tail. So what that means is she is kind of almost like a monkey that can hang from their tail. Now she's not exactly like them because her body is very muscly and she can't fully hang holding on just with her tail or she would slip and fall. But she can use that tail when she's climbing around and sometimes she can even use it almost like an extra foot. Moms and dads, you ever wish you had one of those extra hand, foot, whatever to help you do what you need to do? Well, she's lucky because she has a built-in one and that helps her to grip on and move around those tree branches. Shannon, 
I'm going to send it your way to talk about Flavio. Yeah, speaking of muscles, Flavio, our Argentine boa, is just one long muscle. Um, so he uses those muscles to help him climb. He is an arboreal snake, so just like Rio, he likes to live in the trees, which to me is a little intimidating because he's around six feet long. So imagine a six foot long boa hanging out in a tree above you. Um, but he is built for hanging on. So again, he's got all those nice muscles all along his body to help him hold and wrap onto branches, just like Rio's tail. Um, not only does he hold on to branches, but he is also a constrictor. So he uses those muscles not only for holding on, but also giving a hug to his favorite prey item before he eats it. Um, these snakes are awesome at climbing, but a lot of snakes are also really good at swimming as well. They are one, again, long muscle to help them hold on. Different snakes do locomote different ways depending on where they live. How they move can be different. So it is really cool to see different species. So check out our Tropical Discovery where you can see some of our other snakes as well moving around. Um, what other animals do we have to see moving around today, Laura? I want to send it over to Shelly with Wookie one more time. So just like with Flavio and Rio over here, Wookie also lives in the trees. Um, and the same, just like Rio, Wookie has very sharp claws to help him do that. But unlike Rio, who's lit, who walks on top of tree limbs, as you can see, our sloth hangs from underneath those tree limbs. He uses those sharp claws, and he is a two-toed sloth. You can tell the difference between a two-toed and a three-toed by their front feet. All sloths have three toes on their back but he has two toes on his front legs. He uses those sharp claws to help kind of keep his, his grip on those branches. But he also has a very different uh, internal organs than us. He has a different muscular system too because unlike us, we can push and pull our muscles. He only has muscles to be able to pull. So he does all of his all his strength is always used hanging from those branches. So unlike Rio, who can stand up on top, he's always just hanging from underneath. And as you can see, he's super slow. His locomotion is so slow. That's one of his defense mechanisms. It's harder to see a very slow-moving animal than something that's going to move a little quicker. So he moves so slowly through those trees that it's a little harder for those predators to spot him. Thank you so much, Shelly and Wookie. We want to thank you all so much for joining us at our Wild Encounters demo here. Um, because we were telling you all about our animals, how we like to take care of them by teaching them how to do training so they will allow ultrasound or by setting up these really cool branches that we have. Um, in all three locations to help these very arboreal climbing animals move around. Same thing about our, our world around us too, is we care so much about our own world that we want to remember to do things like the trash behind us if we're going hiking and camping and things like that. So take that with you as you leave today. But for now, I'm going to send you all the way over here under this purple Umbrella. Stephanie is over there in her teal shirt waving. She has a backyard animal or an animal that we may be lucky to have in our own backyard. A box turtle. Once again, thank you so much for joining us at Wild Encounters. We're going to see you next time. Bye-bye.